Hey everyone, welcome back to the shop. I hope you're doing well. Uh, today I thought we would build a board game. Uh, it's called Score 4. It's like a three-dimensional tic-tac-toe. Uh, we're going to build this out of some short boards that I have laying around. Uh, this is a piece of sapilli that's going to be the trim. Uh, this is going to be, this is maple, it's going to be the base. We have a piece of plywood underneath for the core. Uh, these little beads I bought off of Amazon uh, and coated them with uh, shellac. I have to do some darker colored ones like this. Uh, so yeah, let's get into it here and start cutting this material up into pieces and put the game together. All right, uh, maple is cut up. This is, we'll call this the game platform. Uh, and what I'm going to be doing here is I'm going to go through and draw a series of intersecting lines that are going to give me my hole pattern that I'm going to drill for all of the pegs. Uh, so to explain what I've done here, these corners, so this is 2.8 centimeters, uh, this is, or an inch and one eighth, depending on which system you like. This block is a seven inch square or an 18 centimeter square. I've come in this 2.8 centimeters in, so each of these corners is identical. And then from there, I've marked out my points that I'm gonna connect. So from this point to this point, uh, in this particular piece of wood, it's 4.1 centimeters. Uh, so 4.1, 4.1, 4.1 is my spacing, or uh, in this one it's uh, inch and 5 eighths, so it's an inch and 5 eighths from this point to this point. Uh, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to interconnect all these points, which will give me my grid pattern on the board. Uh, then I can take this over to the drill press and drill out my holes for my game supports. And uh, let's go from there. All right, so... Here we are, we have our grid pattern drawn. Uh, a little bit harder to see with the maple there, um, but you can see that my check pattern that I've set up in here. Uh, so I'm gonna drill holes in all of these centers. So I'm gonna drill a, I think 15 16 so I gotta double check that though. Uh, so that's what it's gonna look like. I'm gonna take an awl and just do a quick hole punch on all of those, and then we will go over to the drill press, drill those out. Uh, we're not going to drill right through, we're going to drill down to a set amount uh, based on whatever size game base or game board that you're making. Um, so yeah, let's go do that. Alright, let's drill some holes. So there's the board sort of finished. Uh, I'm gonna run it through the table saw. I just cut the edges off, sort of chamfer the edges on the table saw so that uh, they look a little bit nicer. Uh, so make sure when you're doing this, do all of your markings before you chamfer the edges, if you do that, because uh, that obviously changes your overall measurements because uh, all of your angles on either sides. Uh, and then we will cut out the edges that are going to go around that. Uh, we're going to cut a dado into that or a groove into it uh, so that that wraps around the plywood. Uh, we'll cut the miter those in, uh, glue the board in. We also have to cut all of these guys to size so we have to figure out what the length of the post is going to be so that the little beads sit on it.
All right, uh, we have moved right along here. So what I've done is I have finished this little bit of polymerizing oil because once the posts are in, it's really hard to get in there. Uh, so I do that beforehand. As you can see, all the edges are cut on a 45. I do leave a little bit of a reveal. I just like the look of it. You obviously don't have to do that. That's a 45 degree angle, uh, roughly an eighth of an inch down. Uh, to attach this to the base, what I did is I lit used a little bit of uh, crazy glue and a little bit of an accelerator uh, along with just some ordinary uh, glue underneath that so the accelerator will instantly bond to the crazy glue which provides a clamp like mechanism there and then the glue uh, will harden up and, and provide additional bonding strength. Crazy glue is probably strong enough. Um, Almost everything I build, I overdo it. Uh, so I use the extra glue in there just to give it a little bit of pressure in case anybody ever drops it or anything like that. Uh, next, what I'm going to do is apply a little bit of glue to this, glue that up, and then that's going to wrap around the edge there, which I'll show you what I'm doing there in a moment. Uh, but let's get in there and add some glue. All right, so I folded this up, wiped off any excess glue that there was in there. Uh, so now all we're doing is just wrapping the whole thing around. Obviously, you can see this is the base. The board is sticking through underneath. That's glue. So we're just going to close this up. That needs a little bit more glue on it. So there's a fine balance to not enough glue, not too much glue. Okay, so now I'm just gonna pull that together using the tape. And that will keep that closed. Um, it's hard to see on camera, but what I did is this sits a little bit proud of the base. So why, what I mean by that is this is sitting up, so my dado is slightly deeper than the base is thick, and that just adds like maybe a millimeter, sixteenth of an inch, two millimeter maybe all the way around. Uh, just that I find otherwise the plywood sometimes isn't completely perfect on the bottom, so giving a little lip around it just has it sit square and flat. Uh, now, these are just old scuba diving weights from when I used to be a scuba diver. Uh, so those are five pounds a piece, so there's 10 pounds of pressure on that. Uh, we've got that all tight with the tape. Uh, so yeah, we'll let that sit for a couple hours and let the glue harden up and we can flip it over and start working on uh, gluing in all the little pegs. And we also have to burn or blacken uh, some of the other game pieces and we're pretty much done. All right, so it's time to turn the little wood beads black. Uh, so I just do it the old school way. Uh, as you can see, just a propane torch. Uh, making sure not to stay in one area too long. And we're just trying to get these a nice uniform black without getting them too burnt. And then once this is done, I'll take them outside and I'll spray them with a coat of varathane. You can use shellac, you can use whatever clear coat you want, or, you know, you could actually paint these, spray paint these black. Um, I like the burnt look, so I like to burn them. Who doesn't like a little bit of fire now and again anyway? Right, what I will do is just show you quickly. You don't need much glue in the little holes inside this thing. Um, just a little tiny dab in there. I don't know if this is actually going to work very well. I used to have an attachment for this. You only need just the tiniest amount in there. I drill my holes out so they're slightly smaller than the dowel because I find if you drill the same size hole, so these are 5 16 dowels, uh, if you do a 5 16 hole it's too big. 
uh, you get a lot of squeeze out from the glue in there. Uh, the dowels sit there and because there's a lot of motion on them, dropping the beads into place, uh, it does, they do start to loosen after a while. Uh, so I'm just going to pause there. And just move the glue around inside. Apparently there's an accident somewhere with the And then we just tap those in until they seat. Like I said, the glue is pretty, or the glue is there more as a more as an additional security. Those posts are in there pretty snug as it is. Um, but yeah, the glue will just keep them in there in case they, you know, again, the board gets dropped or anything like that. So yeah, I'll keep going on with those. And uh, once that's done, uh, do a quick sand, throw some finish on that, and the board is pretty much done. I've sprayed the little black uh, contrast beads. Uh, so once everything's done, I'll do a quick setup and show you what it looks like. All right, here is the finished game, ready for gameplay. Uh, this is a super fun game. Uh, I will show you how to play it here momentarily. Uh, really fun build to do as well. A lot of different techniques you could use. You can use any kind of wood you want. Uh, the only thing that's kind of important is the spacing of these posts. Uh, you want to make sure that they are all lined up as perfect as you can. Uh, as well as I like to leave enough space so that I can actually get my hand in between the posts. So don't crowd your posts too close together, otherwise it's too hard to get the uh, game pieces back off. Uh, and as always, if you guys like this kind of content, please let me know. If you build this game, please let me know. Um, any feedback at all in the video is, is, is appreciated. Uh, so yeah, uh, to play this game, you basically alternate. Each player takes one turn as they go. Uh, no particular setup that you want to do. They just keep taking turns going and the object of the game is obviously to get four in a row. So in this setup either white or black can either win, right? Or if it was white's turn, white can block by doing that or white could win the game. Uh, so there's several different ways that you can win this. Obviously four in a row by any way. So four in a row across the bottom, four in a row up top. Uh, the other one that's kind of fun, if you had this particular setup, you can do four in a row. And I'm just alternating pieces as if it was real gameplay. Uh, like so. And that would give you your win across on that angle. And you can do that on any angle that you want. So yeah, I uh, hope you enjoyed the video. I hope you enjoyed the, the game. If you do build it, let me know. And uh, thanks for watching. We'll talk to you soon.